Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and the future of the British monarchy. On March 7th, Oprah Winfrey's interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle sent shockwaves through the British royal family and the world. These allegations of bias, neglect of mental health, and racism within the family could spell disaster for the royals. Let's take a look at the lives of the royal couple, Harry and Meghan, and at what their interview may mean for the future of the British monarchy. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex Prince Henry Charles Albert David, better known as Harry, was born on September 15, 1984. He is the second son of Prince William of the UK, second in line to the British throne, and Princess Diana Spencer. At birth, Harry became a prince and fourth in line to the throne after his father and older brother. The press dubbed him and his brother William the heir and the spare. In childhood, Prince Charles had been left behind when his parents traveled for royal engagements. But William and Harry remained with their parents. Harry's first overseas trip was to Italy when he was less than a year old. Diana wanted her sons to have a more normal childhood than royal children of the past. William and Harry were educated at school beginning in kindergarten rather than at the palace by tutors. Diana took them to Walt Disney World and McDonald's and to AIDS clinics and shelters for the homeless. But it was not happily ever after in the royal marriage. Charles and Diana, who had a 13-year age gap, had little in common and didn't get along. Charles soon reconnected with Camilla Parker Bowles, the woman he had wanted to be with before his family chased her off and pressured him to marry Diana. And Diana, lonely and dealing with constant scrutiny from the press and the royal family, had affairs of her own. Beautiful, glamorous, and kind, Diana was much more relatable to and liked by the public than the prince could ever be. So when news of his affair became public, Charles and Camilla got all the blame. His reputation has never fully recovered. In 1992, 11 years into their marriage, the Prince and Princess of Wales announced that they would divorce. Their sons were 10 and 8, and the royal exes were dedicated to being good parents. Diana continued to live in the public eye, raising her sons with Charles and doing charitable work. But in 1997, her car was chased by paparazzi and crashed, killing her and her partner, Dodi Fayed. Charles told his sons of the death of their mother while the family was staying at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. Their father and grandparents, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, consoled the boys and sheltered them from public view. The public shock and outpouring of grief was enormous. When it was time for her funeral, 12-year-old Harry didn't want to walk behind his mother's coffin before the eyes of the world, but his grandfather pressured him to do it. The event traumatized the young prince. Both William and Harry held a lot of anger for the press, who had dogged their mother to her death, and wouldn't leave them alone either. Harry had a difficult time dealing with his mother's death and constant surveillance from the press as he got up to the typical teenage antics of partying and dating, and the less typical antics of wearing a Nazi uniform. Tabloids gleefully labeled William, the heir, as the golden child, and Harry the spare as the bad boy. He later made public that he sought counseling to deal with these issues. Harry followed his brother to exclusive boys' boarding school, Eton College, where he excelled in polo and rugby, but not in academics. One of his teachers told the press that the staff helped the prince cheat on exams. During his gap year, Harry worked with orphan children in Lesotho and produced a documentary, The Forgotten Kingdom. Harry dated Zimbabwean businesswoman Chelsea Davey from 2004 to 2009. In 2005, Charles married his longtime love, Camilla. William and Harry supported their father's newfound happiness. Harry attended the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst. In 2007, his unit was deployed in Iraq. The British government debated keeping the prince at home and out of harm's way, but Harry was adamant that he be allowed to serve in the war, stating, there's no way I'm going to sit on my arse back home while my boys are fighting for their country. 
In the end, it was decided that as a valuable target, the prince's presence at the front would put his fellow soldiers at risk, and he was kept home. But he was secretly deployed to Afghanistan, where he and his unit repelled an attack from Taliban insurgents. Next, he trained as an Apache helicopter pilot and was again deployed to Afghanistan, where the Taliban threatened to kill or kidnap the prince at any cost. After this threat, Harry returned to London to work in Army headquarters. In 2011, Harry was best man at William's wedding to Catherine Middleton. In 2014, he launched the Invictus Games, a Paralympic-style event for injured servicemen and women. He is involved in several other organizations to support the members of the armed forces. In 2015, Harry retired from the military. He holds the rank of Major in the British Army. In 2016, a friend set him up with American actress Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle was born Rachel Meghan Markle in 1981 in Los Angeles, California. She grew up in Hollywood where her mother was a social worker and her father was a director of photography and lighting and often took his young daughter to work with him on the set of sitcom Married with Children. Meghan has two older half-siblings on her father's side to whom she is not close. Meghan has said of her mixed European and African-American heritage, I have come to embrace it, to say who I am, to share where I'm from, and to voice my pride in being a strong, confident mixed-race woman. At age 11, Megan was profiled by Nick News for her successful letter-writing campaign to get Procter & Gamble to change a sexist commercial. She convinced the company to change the commercial from saying, women are fighting greasy pots and pans, to people. While earning her degree at Northwestern University in Chicago, Megan joined Kappa Kappa Gamma Sorority and worked as an intern at the American Embassy in Buenos Aires, Argentina. After college, Megan returned to Hollywood to try and break into acting. She appeared in bit parts on shows including General Hospital, CSI New York, Fringe, and as a briefcase model on the game show Deal or No Deal. Between acting gigs, she utilized her hobbies of calligraphy and bookbinding to make extra money. She eventually earned bigger roles in movies Get Him to the Greek, Remember Me, and Horrible Bosses. In 2011, Megan married fellow actor Trevor Ingelson, but the couple decided to divorce 18 months later. Megan was cast as Rachel Zane in the legal drama Suits, on which she worked for seven years, repositioning her character from an ingenue to the show's moral conscience. She also launched a lifestyle and fashion website called The Tig, and her own fashion line. In 2016, a friend set Meghan up on a blind date with none other than Prince Harry, grandson of Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. A great deal of tabloid speculation circled the couple, who made their first public appearance together at the Invictus Games the following year. Their engagement was announced in November 2017. Prior to walking down the aisle, Meghan retired from acting, became a British citizen, and was baptized into the Anglican Church. On May 19, 2018, the couple were wed in a lavish, star-studded wedding at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. The ceremony was watched by even more viewers than tuned in for William's wedding seven years earlier, and was noted for nods to Meghan's African-American culture in addition to the traditional Anglican service. The Queen lent Meghan a diamond bow tiara, made in 1932 for Queen Mary. Queen Elizabeth granted her grandson and Meghan the titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Meghan joined her new husband in his charity work and on state visits to Australia, Morocco, and other locations. Her years of acting experience gave her the poise and grace necessary for the demanding job of being a working royal in the media spotlight. And many people of color throughout Britain and the Commonwealth were cheered to see someone who looked like them become part of the royal family. On May 6, 2019, they welcomed a son, Archie. At birth, Archie was seventh in the line of succession, according to the tradition set in 1917 by King George V. As the great-grandson of the monarch, Archie is not entitled to be a prince until his grandfather, Prince Charles, becomes king. However, Prince William's younger children, Charlotte and Louis, were not entitled to this honor either, but the queen made them a prince and princess anyway. 
At the time of Archie's birth, the British press claimed that Harry and Meghan had decided that they didn't want a title for their son. The constant hum of media attention Harry had faced all his life built to a roar once Meghan entered the picture. The family and Meghan in particular have faced a barrage of negative, often racist media coverage and invasions of their privacy. British tabloids clearly favored other members of the family while vilifying Meghan. The Sussexes were criticized for using 2.4 million pounds of taxpayer money to renovate their new home, Frogmore Cottage, while the Cambridges got far less vitriol for the 4.5 million they used to renovate their apartments at Kensington Palace. Most notoriously, papers praised Kate Middleton for eating healthy avocado while pregnant. And when Meghan enjoyed the same snack, she was accused of fueling human rights abuse, drought, and murder. 72 female members of the British Parliament sent an open letter of support to Meghan, condemning the unfair and racist coverage she had received. But the negative headlines continued. Thus, in January 2020, they announced that they would officially step back as senior members of the royal family and split their time between the UK and North America. Predictably, the British tabloid dubbed the departure Megxit and blamed Meghan for breaking up the royal family, alleging she had planned to leave all along and was using her position in the family to gain greater wealth and fame. Harry, Meghan, and Archie initially moved to Vancouver, Canada, where they planned to continue supporting the Queen from a greater distance. But they were told by the firm that they would have their security pulled at a time when they were receiving death threats and the press had leaked their location. They moved into the home of media mogul Tyler Perry, just as the world went into lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic. The couple have since purchased a mansion in Santa Barbara, California. Princess Diana left Harry about 10 million pounds and her priceless jewelry collection. He has used those funds to pay for security for his family. The couple are believed to be worth about 40 million pounds. They have also pinned deals with Netflix and Spotify, potentially worth $100 million. In early 2021, Meghan and Harry sat down for an interview with Oprah Winfrey to tell their side of the story of their departure from the royal family. They claimed that the royals and the firm surrounding them refused to protect them from the media as they did for other family members, and that Meghan was on the brink of suicide but was refused help. They refuted the accusations that they blindsided the Queen with their departure and said they spent many months trying to find a way to remain in the fold. But in the end, Harry had to put the mental health and safety of his wife and child first and leave the country and the royal family. He expressed his fears about history repeating itself, referring to the mental health crises his mother had to endure with little support from the royal family. Dismissing Meghan's pleas for help look very hypocritical for a family involved in charity to promote mental health. But the most damning allegation of all was that when Meghan was pregnant with her son, Archie, members of the firm and the family had decided not to give him the title of prince, or, more importantly to his parents, provide him with personal security, and that there were discussions and concerns about how dark his skin would be. Harry was adamant that he would not reveal which member of his family had made the comments about his son's race, but he said it was not his grandfather or his grandmother, the Queen. The bombshell accusations of racism within the royal family have left the world reeling. Eight million Britons are people of color, as are the majority of the 2.4 billion citizens of the Commonwealth nations, the 54 former British colonies that still consider the Queen their head of state. The interview has accelerated calls in Australia, Barbados, Canada, Jamaica, and other nations to leave the Commonwealth. Since the glorious revolution of 1688, when Parliament invited William III and Mary II to become king and queen and kick her father, Catholic King James II, off the throne, Britain has been a constitutional monarchy. The democratically elected government holds the reins, while the monarch is a figurehead and national symbol but has little tangible political power. 
Because of this, while absolute monarchies in France, Russia, and Germany were abolished and their royal families executed or banished, the rather toothless British monarchy remained in place out of a sense of tradition and national pride. But over the centuries, the continued practice of placing one family above all others, allowing them the use of vast inherited wealth and millions of pounds a year from taxpayers, and making the winner of a genetic lottery the head of state and the face of the nation has frequently been brought into question, especially when those family members were unpopular with the public. In order to maintain their lavish lifestyle and not let down a thousand years of family history, the royals have made a deal with the devil, aka the media. They smile for the cameras, give their time to charitable causes, and generally do their best to maintain the love and support of taxpayers. They know that if they lose their popularity, they could lose everything. Harry, Meghan, Archie, and the daughter they are expecting this summer seem to be set up for a happier life away from the royal family. But in the wake of their interview, the royal family is facing its biggest crisis since the abdication of Edward VIII in 1936. Back then, the media still handled the monarchy with kid gloves and groveling respect. But since the success of their salacious coverage of Princess Margaret's romance in 1953, the tabloids have been happy to air royal dirty laundry. The royals were just beginning to regain face after the 2019 revelation that Prince Andrew, the Queen's second son, was a longtime friend of sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, and he may have had sex with underage women. British tabloids continue to vilify Meghan and Harry, and there is a lot of he said, she said going back and forth. But once the dust settles, there could remain enough momentum among the British public to abolish the monarchy. This would require either a vote within the British Parliament or a referendum vote among the British people. As of December 2020, Queen Elizabeth had a high 72% approval rating, but she is about to turn 95 and can't stay on the throne forever. Her heir, Prince Charles, is considerably less popular, with only 47% approval. While many have suggested the Queen simply skip Charles and hand the throne to William, who has a 74% approval, it is not in her power to do so. As long as Charles outlives his mother, he will become king. He would have to abdicate or be removed by a vote in Parliament for William to get the crown. But with Prince Harry's claims that his father refused to take his calls and fractured their relationship, and both Charles and William under heavy fire as the public speculates who it was that made the racist comments about Archie, both the second and third in line to the throne have seen their popularity drop significantly. Once Charles is on the throne, the British public may very well lose their taste for monarchy. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.